Broadcasting live from the True Crime Today studios to the world. To the world. This is Murder in the Morning with Tony Bruschi and Stacy Cole. From the Hit Killers Podcast, Murder in the Morning. DNA evidence is going to be used in the case of Sandra Birchmore's murder and the charges against Matthew Barwell. That's never a good thing if you're accused of murder and somehow your DNA is connected to the crime scene. But <laughs> You know, I'm wondering, are we thinking DNA like around the neck or did we do like a swab of other areas? You know what I'm getting at? I have no idea, Stacey, what you're getting at. Why don't you be very graphic and explicit? <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, you know, we know that she was pregnant. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, let's let's find out. Federal prosecutors announced new developments in the case against former Stoughton police officer Matthew Farwell, 38. He's charged with the murder of Sandra Birchmore, 23. Court documents filed by both defense and the prosecution reveal plans to introduce DNA evidence with prosecutors noting expert testimony regarding DNA testing in this case will be presented. Preliminary DNA tests have been provided to Farwell's defense team, according to these filings. Farwell arrested in August faces allegations of strangling Birchmore and staging her death as a suicide. Acting U.S. Attorney Joshua Levy stated that Birchmore's death was a culmination of years of grooming and abuse by Farwell, beginning when she was a young teenager. Authorities allege that Farwell's inappropriate relationship with Birchmore began in 2013, three years after she joined the Stoughton Police Department's Explorers program at the age of 12. Yes. Uh. You heard right. By 15, Birchmore was reportedly being sexually exploited by Farwell, then 27 years old. Despite the age of consent being 16 in Massachusetts, the two continued a relationship for years, with Farwell often meeting her for sexual encounters including while on duty, according to court records. In late 2020, Birchmore informed Farwell that she was pregnant with his child. The disclosure reportedly led to tension and violence in their relationship. Mr. Farwell was losing control in late 2020. Early 2021, Levy noted, the information that Sandra Birchmore possessed about his illegal conduct was in danger of slipping out. Levy claims that Farwell sought to silence Birchmore, driven by fear that she might expose his actions to authorities. Huh, you think? Text messages obtained by federal investigators indicate that Farwell grew increasingly hostile towards Birchmore after learning she had confessed in, uh, confided in friends about their relationship. These interactions show that in January of 21, Farwell was angry when Birchmore requested he attend a medical appointment and provide information for the baby's birth certificate. Shortly afterward, prosecutors allege that he killed her. In uh, February of 21, prosecutors believe Farwell strangled Birchmore in her Canton apartment on the 1st, staging the scene to appear as though she had taken her own life. Levy asserted that the nature of Birchmore's injuries, particularly the broken neck, is inconsistent with suicide. Forensic expert William Smock, part of the federal uh, part of the federal investigation team, highlighted that the neck injuries were more commonly seen in strangulation assaults, challenging the uh, initial suicide ruling. Uh, which, by the way, everyone, was the ruling for quite some time. And yes, that's what the local authorities ruled it as. And again, remember, another key piece to this case, the first officer on the scene, the one who said, yeah, let's, uh, it's okay. We don't need to, uh, you know, look at this much more. Um, uh, Michael Proctor. Bum, bum, bum. Yes, Michael Proctor. <laughs> uh, yeah, that Michael Proctor from Karen Reed. And, um, and also uh, that we now know the uh, Anna Walsh case. Uh, the indictment against Farwell includes a charge of murder, specifically for killing a witness to prevent the disclosure of federal crimes. Prosecutors allege that his actions demonstrate, premedi uh, demonstrate premeditation and malice. In addition, Farwell faces allegations of coercion, de uh, deprivation of rights, and uh, potential wire fraud. Federal authority authorities also reveal that Farwell's brother, William, admitted to his sexual relationship with Birchmore shortly after her death. William Farwell, a Stoughton police officer, agreed to surrender his police certification in September and resigned amid an internal affairs investigation in 2022. 
Farwell has pled guilt, not guilty, remains in custody without bail. His case will proceed with the new evidence provided by DNA testing and testing and testimony that will allow the prosecution, they believe, will strengthen their argument. Uh, it could lead to a life sentence or potentially the death penalty, reflecting on the gravity of the alleged crimes against Birchmore. Uh, I still want to... I, 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 I'm wondering if the case on the brother is going to get any more traction uh, or if they can prove that there was any sort of interaction between him and her when she was a minor, if there was at all. Uh, it just would, I'd be shocked if there wasn't. And that's my conjecture. There's nothing that points to it right now. He is innocent. Um, no charges have been brought against him, but the, the sickness that's going on here and the way that she was preyed upon by uh, his brother, Matthew. And now it seems they just kind of passed her around. I mean, even the fucking school resource officer allegedly was in on this, not the oh, murder, God. but the sex. Um, if she was of age, then uh, there's not a lot that can be done because it does appear to be consensual. Uh, but all those times before uh, that shit, my God, I, there's just so much darkness in this department. Uh, I, yeah, uh, I, I just, you know, and this is completely, it's unrelated, but it's not. Um, so last night I was out uh, hunting for the Northern Lights. There was a huge uh, Northern Lights show. And, and by the time this airs, it will have been a couple of days ago that we had massive Northern Lights. And I'm out on this country road by myself. Um, and you ran into Michael to... Proctor. <laughs> no, well, no, well, hang on, hold tight. Okay. So I'm out there and I'm off on the side of the road and I turned off my lights and I see this car approaching and it's starting to have like reflective stuff on the side. And I'm like, oh, okay, it's a sheriff's deputy. And he kind of pulls into the middle of the road and next to my vehicle. And I put my window down a little bit. Yeah. He goes, Hey, you doing okay over there? Do you need anything? And I'm like, I'm, I'm good. Thank you so much for asking. He goes, can I ask what you're doing? And I said, well, the Northern lights are coming out in about 20 minutes. Oh, okay. All right. All good. Thanks. And then he went on his way. But as I'm sitting there, just by a cornfield, like waiting for the Northern lights, I'm like, you know, those are people we're supposed to trust. Those mm -hmm. are people that should make you feel safe and protected and valued. I mean, I felt really secure in the fact that he gave a shit and, and was checking on me. That's his job. That's what he's paid for. And when you hear this story, yeah. I, I have no words. I have no, I, I don't know what to say to this. It's, heartbreaking yeah. that there are so many people in in positions of power that betrayed this child mm -hmm. on many numerous multiple occasions time after fucking time failed her yeah i don't know what to say i Just don't yeah uh, it's it's interesting when you run across a group of people that seem to not have any sort of empathy or conscience. Um, you see them like kind of as lone wolves sometimes. It's like, oh, there's an odd one over there. Once you kind of get like that, like you find those people in weird places. They kind of blend into society, uh, sometimes better, some better than others. Um, but when you realize what some people are about, you're like, oh, holy shit. But I do think sometimes they run in packs. Yeah, and it's it's isn't it Robin Robin Drake that talks about groupthink all the time? Yes, and when you get many of them together, I think that's when things can get even worse because it's almost like, well, that person got away with this. This person, I bet I can get away with this. And if you're already dumb enough to be kind of in that mindset uh, of going down roads like that and abusing your power, um. There's probably not a lot of places that goalpost can't be moved to. Well, and think about it like this. When you're sitting in traffic, okay, and you're, let's say you're you're sitting in rush hour traffic. If you're in a big city, I, I grew up in Minneapolis. So to me, this was like a daily occurrence. You're sitting in your car 
there's a stoplight and you want to turn right, but the right turn lane is mm, it's a ways up yet because of traffic. So mm-hmm. you're looking like uh, I, I'm not supposed to drive on the shoulder to get to the right hand turn lane. Yep. You know, I'm supposed to just wait for a couple cycles of the light. Then I can legally get into the turn lane and go. But then you start to see people. They're like, fuck it. I'm just going to drive, you know, on the shoulder or the, you know, where it's marked where you can't be. And I'm going to get to that turn lane. Mm -hmm. And you see five or six people doing it and you go, well, they did it. I can do it. You you, you throw out all the rules that, you know, you're not supposed to do that, but you see other people doing it and you go, Mm -hmm. well, they did it. I can do it. Yeah. And that's where it gets shot. And especially if it's a a position of leadership that is doing it. It, it's one thing if it's kind of a someone like in a lower rung of the uh, the totem pole at the whatever you know institution we're talking about here, uh, but if it's at the top, that's how a lot of people get infected really quick. Because like yeah. and 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 those that especially if it's at the top, the ones that are going to make the decisions, they're going to bring in people that are also not going to rat on them either, uh, and allow them to do whatever twisted shit they want to do. Uh, and those that have a moral compass uh, and are not cool with something like that, they're not going to last. Um, they'll either be removed because that person is going to find a way to get rid of them because they know that that's a threat or that person will remove themselves uh, by just recognizing this is not an environment that I want to be in anymore. Um, so then what do you get as that environment if it's allowed to uh, fester, uh, you know, the way it, it does and churn itself through people, uh, year, two, three, longer in, you have an entire fucking army of people that all have the same sort of, you know, loose uh, think on how the rules should be handled. And yeah, then shit starts going really dark. And that's what seems like is going on over in the Stoughton Police Department and over in Canton. Not saying everybody by any stretch of the imagination. I'm sure there's some decent people right. that come in and come out and all that. But I feel like it's it's weighted down. It's not just one person. There's there's uh, uh, the scale on this is not good, and I feel like it's weighing on the the side of dark people uh, that are just shitty human beings um, uh, versus the goodness in people that are trying to uh, do good in this world and be there to protect and serve. Well, and you and I saw this, you know, a lot of our listeners may not know our our history, but you and I worked together and we saw some really sketchy, shady things in radio. Yes. And, you know, you, you have your good people and you have your fucking horrible people. And it's really hard for the good people to sustain themselves in that environment. So what happens is people leave. Mm -hmm. So the good people, the ones who are the whistleblowers who go, I'm seeing something over here. I don't like that's not good. Not okay. If upper management doesn't do something about it or upper management's the problem, Mm -hmm. people leave, they go somewhere else. And then all you end up with in these places are the quote unquote horrible people. Yeah. So, you know, it's, and I'm not saying that those departments are just filled with horrible people, but the good people who can't fight it anymore yeah. for their own mental health leave. Well, and it can happen in any sort of institution or, or, or you know, company. Yeah. The, the problem with something like this is it's law enforcement. So these people yeah. have fucking power. Uh, right. over the citizens. And, and it, there's a hell of a lot more to that than, you know, us at a radio station, you know, oh, absolutely. You know, or, or, we had no yeah. power whatsoever, yeah. you know, or, or, you know, any, anything that th- you're talking about law enforcement. And when you get a, a, a group that is that unhealthy and that much into their own negative group think of control and power, um, that's where it gets to be very, scary but again it can happen in any any it's 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 human nature this is just how people work and that's why you need the checks and balances that's why you need somebody from the outside that can be able to look into these things and look into these departments to make sure that they don't go awry uh in areas like that and that the people are mentally healthy uh in these positions i mean like the fbi and such they do like yearly checks on that shit to make sure that people are in good you know, good standing, good mental health. Uh, but, uh, you know, local departments, things of that nature. No. Uh, and, and, you know, once you have that negative in power, good luck getting it out. 
uh, because they have the power to prevent you from doing that in many cases. Uh, and it takes uh, quite a bit uh, to get uh, that accomplished. God, it's just scary stuff, isn't it? Very much. Very, very, very much. You're neck deep in a dark, twisted tale. And just as the tension peaks, bam, a commercial about some miracle diet pill breaks the spell. It's like finding a fly in your soup after the first bite. But here's the fix. True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. You get to enjoy your crime stories without the junk, add free episodes, extended interviews that go beyond the surface, and early access to all the gruesome details. It's like swapping out a can of cheap beer for a glass of fine whiskey. So search for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe and keep the darkness flowing uninterrupted.